Hi and Assalamu Alaikum to everyone. Last week we had finished the lecture session for Chapter 3. From this week, we will be discussing Chapter 4 for about two weeks. This chapter will have a longer lecture session compared to the last chapter. I will divide this long discussion to several parts of the online lecture session here in Microsoft Streams. I hope all of the students will watch and listen to this video until the end. As usual in our previous lecture session, there will be several parts of this lecture video where students need to answer quizzes question based on this lecture video and also for the attendance. Without a further delay, let's begin the lecture. Please enter your text here. Firstly, I will again list down here the learning outcome for Chapter 4. For today, there are two main outcomes to be achieved at the end of the lecture session. Firstly, the student is able to describe the basic operation and characteristics of a diode in forward bias and reverse bias region. Secondly, all of you are able to explain the current and voltage curve of the diode in forward bias and also reverse bias region. Basically, for today's lecture we will focus on these two bold blue font outcomes up here. The rest will be covered on the coming lecture session. In the chapter 4, we have discussed about the 4.1 until 4.5 in the last lecture session. For today, our aim is to discuss the sub-chapter 4.1 until 4.3. Diode will be introduced in the beginning. Followed by the basic operation and characteristic of diode. For the last three sub-chapter, we will discuss about the current and voltage curve graph. Ok now, let's start with the introduction of diode. One question here, have you heard about the diode before in your high school syllabus or maybe at matriculation syllabus? Yes, I would be the same device. But for the university level, it may be a little bit deeper in the topic coverage. From previous chapter 3, we already understand stand there are two types of semiconductor materials, N-type which most of the carrier are electrons while the other one is P-type with majority carrier from holes. Here, by combining these two materials, the first solid-state electronic device can be constructed as what we called a diode. Diode is an electronic component which has two terminals or electrodes and acts like a switch. Schematic symbol for the diode as in this figure. Negative electrode or cathode is noted by the black line on the diode. So, this black line is important to differentiate the diode terminals before we utilized it in any practical or real circuit design. Diode has a basic function which it is used to allow current flow through a circuit in one direction which is from anode to the cathode and block the current from opposite direction. How Diode is Formed Doping process which had been discussed last week was the first idea to explain how the N and P type material is formed. 
Here the diode is initially formed by principle of doping semiconductor materials such as silicon, germanium, and other to create p-type and n-type of semiconductors material. Remember about the majority carrier in this both n and p-type? I hope all of you already understand these holes and electrons. When these two material P and N is connected to each other, a junction so-called PN junction is obtained. In other word, we can say that when both P-type and N-type material are joined in close contact thus creates a PN junction between both materials as the figure below. Later, the diffusion process occurred after several moments after the p-n junction is obtained. Free electrons in n region diffuse across the junction and combine with holes in p region to form negative ions and leave behind positive ions in n region. Later, a space charges builds up and creating a depletion region which preventing further diffusion of carriers across this junction. We can see the depletion layer in the figure below. Now let us recap the potential difference which in the last chapter 3. The diode is formed once the p-type and n-type are placed in close contact and this will form a depletion region which has a potential value. This potential or large E here is known as potential barrier and it is depending on the material of semiconductor. Now, take a look at the figure in this slide. Green and orange area are neutral N region and P region. Whereby, in the middle region of these two is now reflected to the potential difference. If leads are connected to the ends of each material in this two terminal device will results as shown in this figure below. Therefore, we have several options to connect this diode to the external bias or voltage. Three options then become available here which are no bias, forward bias, and reverse bias. Ok again we know that, this term bias here refers to the application of an external voltage across these two terminals of the device to extract a response to the diode. For no applied bias where VD is 0 volt. This means the PN junction is with no electrical bias been applied. In diffusion effects, the holes and electrons move from area of high concentration to areas of low concentration. As in this figure, we can see the holes and electron annihilate or we can say eliminate each other to form an area depleted of free charge in the middle. This middle region is known as the depletion region. It blocks any further flow charge carriers across the junction till a specific voltage. To get the idea of this no bias or same books refers it as no applied bias, we can take a look to this figure. In this figure, clearly, the PN region or diode is not connected to any external volt 0 volt and the resulting current is also 0 ampere, much like an isolated resistor. The direction of current for diode is from anode to cathode. The electrons in n-type material must overcome the attractive forces of the layer of positive ions in the n-type material and the shield of negative ions in the p-type material to migrate into the area beyond the depletion region of the p-type material. Next, 
we will take a look at when there is any forward bias been applied. Here, we established the forward bias by applying positive potential to the p-type and negative potential to n-type in order to allow current flow through the p-n junction. The forward bias voltage here must be greater than the barrier potential. The usage of this resistor is to limit the current to a value that will not damage the p-n structure. By applying forward bias, it will result this same charge repel. The negative and positive side of the bias voltage source force electrons in n-type and holes in p-type material to recombine with the ions near the boundary. The negative side of the source also provides a continuous flow of electrons through the external connection which is a conductor into the N region. The recombination will reduce the depletion region width. After the depletion region is reduced as mentioned in the previous slide, heavy majority flow across the junction due to a reduced barrier at the junction and strong attraction for the AND VE potential applied to the P-type material. As the applied bias increases in magnitude, the depletion region will continue to decrease in width until a flood of electrons can pass through the junction, resulting in an exponential rise in current. Once the applied voltage exceeds the knee voltage, the current exponentially increased. This knee voltage is referred to potential barrier of PN junction depending on the material of semiconductor. At this voltage point, the current starts to rapidly increase exponentially. Silicon with 0.7 volt, germanium with 0.3 volt, and gallium arsenic is 1.2 volt. Here, this dotted red line shows the voltage knee of any PN combination. We can see that at this point the current increased exponentially after reaching the VK or VD in this figure. This figure shows the voltage knee for silicon semiconductor diode characteristic. However, in reverse bias condition is opposite of the forward bias whereby the VD is less than 0 volt. This reverse bias diode prevents current through the diode by applying the positive terminal to the N-type and negative terminal to P-type material. As unlike or different charges attract, the positive side of the bias voltage source pulls the free electrons in the N region which away from the P-N junction. As the electrons flow toward the positive side of the voltage source, additional positive ions are created. The holes in the p-type are attracted by the negative terminal away from the junction where they create additional negative ions. All these additional positive and negative ions will result in a widening of the depletion region and thus, majority electrons cannot diffuse across the junction and recombine with holes. However, there is still a small current flow through the junction due to minority carrier in depletion region. This current is so small and even we can neglect it. It is called reverse saturation current IS or IR which typically in nanoampere or seldom in microampere except for high power devices. Here, this dotted red line shows the voltage for reverse bias for a PN combination which is in the middle of the graph. 
The third type of the bias in diode is breakdown region. A point where the applied external voltage is too negative or very high in reverse bias. Beyond this point, the current increases at very rapid rate. This reverse bias potential that cause rapid change is called breakdown potential VBV or reverse breakdown voltage VBR. If the external reverse bias voltage is increased to a value called breakdown voltage, the reverse current will drastically increase. And this will result in a high reverse current that can damage the diode because excessive heat dissipation. The maximum reverse bias potential that can be applied before entering the breakdown region is called as peak inverse voltage PIV rating or peak reverse voltage PRV rating. Now let us compare the forward and reverse bias. On the left is the forward bias. Voltage source or bias connections are positive to the P material and negative to the N material. Here, this bias must be greater than 0.3 volt for germanium or 0.7 volt for silicon diodes. The depletion region narrows. Oppositely in the reverse bias case, voltage source or bias connections are negative to the P material and positive to the N material. The bias here must be less than the breakdown voltage. In reverse bias, the current flow is negligible in most cases. The depletion region widens as we can see in the figure on the right hand side. For the next sub chapter, 4.3, we will discuss about current and volt characteristic of a diode. As forward bias produces current through a diode, the current is called forward current. From the graph, with zero V across the diode, there is no forward current at the point A. The forward current increases gradually as you increase the forward bias voltage shown in from point A to B. When the forward bias voltage is increased to a value where the voltage across the diode reaches approximately 0.7 volt, the forward current begins to increase rapidly, as shown at the knee of the curve into C. At this point, forward voltage remains at approximately 0.7 volt. As external bias voltage and forward current continue above the knee, the forward voltage will increase slightly above 0.7 volt. This is due to the voltage drop across the internal dynamic resistance. As the reverse voltage increases gradually, there is a very small reverse current and the voltage across the diode increases. When the applied bias voltage is increased to a value where the reverse voltage across the diode reaches the breakdown value, the reverse current begins to increase rapidly. With zero volt across the diode, there is no reverse current. As you continue to increase the bias voltage, the current continues to increase very rapidly but the voltage across the diode increases very little above. For the reverse biased, when a reverse voltage is applied across the diode, there is only an extremely small reverse current, through PN junction. Remember that reverse bias prevents current if the reverse bias voltage does not equal or exceed the breakdown voltage of the junction. 
The complete current and voltage characteristic curve for a diode is the combination of the curves for both forward bias and reverse bias. Notice that the IF scale is in milliampere compared to the IR scale as microampere. For both forward and reverse currents, as the temperature is increased, both currents will also increase. This figure shows the current and voltage graph for several semiconductor material. Different material has their specific VK and VBV. Ideal diode also is utilized as a mechanical switch. Forward bias as in figure 1.2.1a act like a closed switch which allows the currents flow through it. While for the reverse bias which is in figure 1.2.1b act like an open switch which blocks any currents flow through it since the IS is too small and approximated as 0 ampere. In forward bias the diode is considered as closed switch. Resistance of diode is 0 ohm. While in reverse bias is considered as open switch. Here the resistance of diode is infinity in ohm. Here. We can conclude that the ideal and the practical diode by having the both figure and graph left and right. In practical point of view, the VK is actually differs based on the semiconductor been used. Here as example, VK is 0.7 volt for silicon semiconductor diode. For ideal equivalent circuit, the 0.7 volt level can be ignored in comparison to the applied voltage level. Thus, the circuit is reduced to only ideal diode. Okay, thank you guys for watching NMZH's channel. Hopefully, you can get um, knowledge and benefit from the videos. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum.